Hi everyone, welcome to the Earth Science Regents Review podcast series created by Homics Middle School Earth Science Department. Today we're going to focus our attention on page 16 in the reference table, the mineral identification chart. So this chart is broken up into columns and rows, much like a lot of your other charts in your reference table. So if you know your characteristics of minerals, trying to find the information out of here should not be that much of a challenge. So let's take this chart and break it up into a couple different sections. Let's first focus on your metallic luster minerals. Okay, so these minerals probably going to be one of the smaller groups of minerals that we're going to talk about. Okay, you only have four of them, graphite, galena, magnetite, and pyrite. These are all going to have some sort of metallic luster. They're going to look like pieces of metal. Starting over on the left side is your luster, which is going to really be the determining factor in terms of what grouping you're going to look at. Once you figure out the luster of a mineral, then you'll know exactly where in the chart to go to. So you have your metallic luster, Next over is going to be your hardness. Again, it, with the metallic lusters, it goes from 1 to 6.5. Remember, anything less than 5.5 is not going to scratch glass. Anything greater than 5.5 will scratch glass. Next section over is going to be the way a mineral is going to break. Cleavage is going to break along a flat surface, fracture along an uneven surface. Variety of colors for each one of our minerals. Very important distinguishing characteristics. A lot of times you're going to get these special properties for each individual mineral that you're going to need to know. The common uses. Next over is going to be the composition. And you see some are single elements. Most of them are going to be compounds. And then finally the mineral name as well. Okay, so those are going to be your metallic luster minerals. So for instance, if we have minerals that need that are really dense, you want to find galena has a density of 7.6 grams per cubic centimeter. You want to find a mineral that's magnetic. Okay, that's going to be magnetite. You want to try to find a mineral that's considered fool's gold. That's going to be your pyrite. So you need to know what your characters are looking at in order to figure out the mineral name. So if you have a mineral that we're looking at needs uh, to contain fracture, needs to have a metallic luster, needs to contain the composition of Fe304, you're looking at the mineral magnetite. And that's essentially how you'd use it. So we'll do that again down in the non-metallic minerals as well. Below your metallic luster minerals, you have a special mineral called hematite, and that can go either way. It could be either be, either be metallic or it could be non-metallic as well. It's very versatile in its formation. Okay, below that is going to be the bulk of our chart, and that's going to be your non-metallic luster minerals. Now, you have the majority of them in here, so you have a lot, a lot of information you're going to have to dig through in order to figure out questions on your Regents exam and on your midterm. So for instance, all the way to left, there's your luster, non-metallic. Next section over, that's going to be your hardness. Hardness goes from 1 to 7.5. Again, 5.5 is a boundary. Anything less will not scratch glass. Anything more will. Next over, it's going to be the way the mineral breaks. Majority of our check marks are underneath cleavage, which means it's going to break along a flat surface. You have a couple underneath fracture, uneven surface. You have your common colors. You have your very important distinguishing characteristics. You have your common uses, your chemical compositions. You see some of those compounds are extremely complex. And then finally, the actual mineral names as well. Again, some of the more important distinguishing characteristics, uh, such as greasy feel for talc, you get uh, flexible and thin sheets, not only for muscovite mica, but also for biotite mica. Uh, calcite bubbles with acid. If you need any information about direction of cleavage planes, again, very important to figure out. So for instance, if we have, uh, we want to try to find the mineral that has a non-metallic luster, has a hardness of two, is used for plaster of Paris or drywall, that's going to give us the mineral selenite gypsum. Again, it's just a big scavenger hunt throughout. Okay, Getting back to chemical composition, you never have to memorize the individual elemental names because they're all given to you at the very bottom here. Okay, Other than that, we're pretty much completed here. Good luck. We'll talk to you soon.